This video was brought to you by my beautiful Patreon community and my YouTube channel members. Thank you so much. Welcome you 34,000 lovers of freedom and the 80% of you who haven't subscribed yet to another installment of Saturday Morning Cartoon Propaganda. Today, we're gonna be learning all about Paradise, one of the central doctrines in Jehovah's Witness religion. And we're gonna learn how Watchtower markets the afterlife to young, impressionable children. It's about to get culty. You know we're doing the cringe challenge, so if you cringe, you lose. And when you cringe, let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's go. So today's cartoon is titled, See Yourself in Paradise. And it quotes Psalm 37, 11, which reads, <clears throat> But the meek will possess the earth, and they will find exquisite delight in the abundance of peace. Now, JWs interpret this verse to say that righteous people will inherit the planet and turn it into a paradise. But if you read the verse in context, you find out that it's really referring to the Israelites inheriting the promised land. In fact, other translations translate this word as land. The meek will possess the land. It makes more sense. And you will see this repeated over and over again during our discussion, since the JW Doctrine of Paradise is constructed over sherry-picked verses that were originally written for ancient Israelites. But more on that later. Let's play the first clip. Wow, Dad, you really got a lot better. Yeah, he has, thankfully. Well, Jehovah has given me 8,000 years to practice. Wait, if this takes place 8,000 years into the future, why are Caleb and Sophia still kids? Ah, uh, never mind. I forgot this is fictional. <laughs> but that's one of the selling points of paradise, the prospect of eternal time to develop your favorite hobbies. Oh, look, they're here. Wow. What about you, Sophia? What do you want to do in paradise? Oh, I know. She wants to have her own butterfly garden. That would be nice. Sophia, you know these already exist, right? They're called, um, what are they called again? Lepidopterariums, <laughs> or butterfly gardens. And you can potentially have your own butterfly garden if you get into the study of bugs or something. I'm sure it's not impossible. You don't have to wait till paradise to have this, girl. But there are some people I want to meet first. Oh, Sophia, that's going to be so beautiful. Now, if you're wondering, what the hell is going on? Why is Sophia hugging some Bronze Age looking girl in a butterfly garden? Well, this is the unnamed servant girl uh, from the story of Naaman in the Bible. I think she's already been featured in this other cartoon, which we haven't covered yet. So Sophia wants to meet her favorite Bible character in Paradise. And that's another Paradise selling point as well, because you have the prospect of meeting your favorite Bible characters. Noah, Abraham, David, you name them. You can invite them to dinner and talk to them about their lives. Which if you think about it, sounds like absolute torture for these resurrected Bible heroes because they would become instant celebrities and they would be constantly harassed all the time. So JW kids are really encouraged to get into these stories to see these Bible characters as their friends. Like in this music video, where this young boy is reading all these Bible stories, some of them incredibly violent, and he's fantasizing on the day where he gets to meet all these people in paradise. Yeah. <laughs> 
And how about this other music video where this young girl is learning how to play the flute from none other than King David himself. You know it's King David because he's the only redhead in Watchtower lore. <laughs> And there's so many illustrations of Bible characters in paradise and they were usually portrayed either telling stories or studying the Bible with a JW, catching up on all the events that happened after their death. Here's a picture of Noah teaching children about the ark. <laughs> How cute, right? I wonder if he's gonna tell them the story of that one time he got super pissed drunk, got naked, and then proceeded to curse one of his grandsons. What about you, Caleb? Well, I kind of just want to be with all of you. Aww. <laughs> and the monkeys. <laughs> oh, you love monkeys. It's good to imagine ourselves in paradise. It helps us to rejoice in the hope that Jehovah has given us. Look, Mom. <laughs> I'm rejoicing in the hope. Whee! No, my friend, you're tripping on acid. So boys and girls, let's talk about paradise. I know that a lot of people in my lovely audience have never been Jehovah's Witnesses and I appreciate you being here. So let me explain. The vast majority of Christians believe that they're gonna go to heaven once they die. And they believe that the earth will be destroyed once Jesus returns. But most Jehovah's Witnesses expect to live in a restored paradise on earth. There is a heaven, with Jesus and God in them, but only 144,000 people called anointed make it to heaven to rule with Christ. So they're gonna like govern with Jesus over paradise. But most JWs expect to live in a restored paradise. So Jesus comes back, he brings the war of Armageddon, he destroys all unbelievers, and then the survivors rebuild the earth and turn it into a paradise. Then Jehovah resurrects billions and billions of people that didn't have a chance to uh, learn about Jesus and they're giving an opportunity to live forever. This everlasting life on earth is a life without disease, without wars, and without death. So paradise is the main selling point of the religion. It's the reason why so many people converted back in the 80s and the 90s is because of this idea of living forever on a paradise earth. They want to see their dead loved ones be resurrected, they want to live in a world without disease, and they want to be young again. It's a very attractive idea to a person who is going through a rough time. But children are usually not very preoccupied about dying or dealing with disease, usually. So you have to sell them the idea of paradise a bit differently. And the main way you do this is by using animals. Yeah, in paradise, you're gonna be able to interact with wild animals without being mauled or bitten. <laughs> this belief is taken from these verses from Isaiah, which if you read in context, Isaiah is not talking about like literal animals. He's, he's using poetic language to refer to people. It's a restorationist prophecy meant for the people of Israel that were scattered around the nations after the exile and it's a promise that they will return one day to the land of Israel under a rightful leader and be at peace, just like a lion being at peace with a lamb. But Watchtower being like a very fundamentalist religion takes these verses literally and argues that animals will be at peace with humans one day, just as they were in the Garden of Eden. And the funny thing is that these animals are not only gonna be at peace with humans, they're also going to be at peace with each other, meaning that all the carnivores are going to become vegetarian, and that's why you have pictures of lions um, eating hay with sheep and cows. <laughs> Children will be able to play with venomous snakes, swim with sharks, and sleep out in the jungle. And in the cartoon, we saw Caleb that really likes monkeys for some reason. I mean, come on, who doesn't like monkeys? Monkey. He's swinging with monkeys and that's what he wants to do in paradise. Swing with monkeys. But the most common animal that Watchtower uses to sell paradise has to be the black panda. You're just a big, fat panda. Pandas have even become a meme in the XJW community at this point because Watchtower always portrays people eating watermelons and having their own pet panda in paradise. 
And that's why I chose a red panda for my mascot in this channel. No, it's not because I'm a furry. I'm not a furry, I promise. It's because I'm making fun of this idea of having your own pet panda in paradise. And I thought a red panda would be very fitting because, you know, it's... I like them. I like red pandas. They're really cute. So it's fine if millions of people are executed in Armageddon as long as we get our pet pandas. Everything is fine. So that's how you sell paradise to kids, by promising them wild animals as pets. Mm, monkey. But that's not the only selling point, of course, because you also have the resurrection, which is the prospect of seeing your deceased loved ones brought back to life. Now, the resurrection is the main coping mechanism used by Jehovah's Witnesses when they are experiencing grief. And this also extends to children as well, since we live in a world where children, you know, also lose family members. So in the following video, we're gonna see how Sophia copes with grief. Let's watch. Thank you so much for your visit. See you later, Sister Elsa. Mom? Is Elsa gonna die? Oh, we don't know yet. <laughs> Can't Jehovah just fix her? Yes, he can, Sophia, but he decides not to because of a, a free will or something. Oh, honey. Oh. He's already done something to help her. Do you remember who he sent? Jesus? But how does that help her now? Hmm. Do you remember how long Adam was supposed to live? Forever! But then he didn't listen to Jehovah and ruined everything. Since we are all Adam's children, that means we also get sick, old, and eventually die. But what hope did Jehovah give us? He sent Jesus to give his life in place of the one that Adam lost. How could he do that? Because he was perfect like Adam, but he obeyed Jehovah. Yes! Thanks to Jehovah for giving us Jesus as the ransom. Now we all have the hope of living forever in paradise. And when we are going through tough times, like right now, that hope can get us through. Elsa? Sister Elsa! Oi, oh, a young Elsa looks kind of terrifying. <laughs> so yes, boys and girls, uh, Paradise is basically the JW version of heaven. So instead of saying Elsa is in heaven, you say Elsa is in Jehovah's memory, waiting to be resurrected. Now, this belief in Paradise seems innocent enough, after all, most Christians believe in a version of their afterlife, you know? But this dogma does have real-world negative consequences on the life of JWs. Let me explain. While most Christians see heaven as something reserved after death, usually. I know there's evangelical Christians that believe in the imminent rapture, which is another story. But okay, in general, Christians see heaven as something reserved after death. That's not usually... Uh, a pressing issue in their minds, in, in their day-to-day -day life. But, JWs believe that paradise is just around the corner. It's imminent. But for paradise to be established, first you need the War of Armageddon to destroy all unbelievers. So remember, only Jehovah's Witnesses survive Armageddon. And this Armageddon is just around the corner. It could happen any day now. It's the day I'm waiting for it's just around the corner. So while regular Christian kids are usually encouraged to pursue a good college degree to have a fulfilling life here and now, JW kids are discouraged from pursuing higher education since this current system is about to be destroyed. After all, what's the point of making friends with unbelievers 
in pursuing wealth, in bettering yourself, if all of that will be swept away real soon. The JW religion is a doomsday cult, so its members are raised with the belief that they're gonna be the ones to see Armageddon. This has been the selling point of the religion for more than a hundred years. Millions now living will never die. And of course, we see that with every new generation, they grow old and die, and these paradise promises don't come true. So this belief in an imminent paradise not only sabotages children's academic goals, it also primes them to become salesmen for the religion, because if you really believe that the, the world is gonna end real soon, your mind is preoccupied in warning others about the imminent destruction. That's why Caleb and Sophia have such a hard time at school, because their main reason to be there is not to have an education or to make friends, it's to convert others. You want to convert your classmates so they make it to paradise with you. But I want everyone to get to paradise. So does Jehovah. And you know what? People can change. That's why we share his message. So, what can you say to Carrie? Well, I could tell her about the paradise. I could tell her about the animals and the resurrection. That's awesome. Let's practice. So all of the tangible academic goals that these children could achieve are traded in for a fantasy that is never going to happen. College degrees and financial stability for pandas and watermelons. It just makes me so angry. And there's a whole array of propaganda uh, promoting the idea of paradise. It's not only Caleb and Sophia videos. We also have a lot of music videos since 2014 that focus on paradise. And we're going to be looking at some of them so you get an idea of how culty they are. This first one is from the 2014 convention. I believe it was the follow Jesus one. And it starts with a father grieving his daughter in a graveyard. And we also see old people becoming young again once they're in paradise. Just see yourself, just see me too, just see us all in a world that is new. These videos are the most potent propaganda Watchtower can utilize because they pull at the heartstrings, they're emotional. When these are played in conventions, in the stadiums, you'll usually find like half of the audience tearing up during the videos because most of us have lost someone in death, so it's, it's a universal experience. And Watchtower reuses several tropes during their videos, and one of them is that of the paralyzed girl being able to walk again. You're gonna you're gonna be seeing this a lot. <laughs> in the same convention, we also got this video of this girl greeting her sister in the resurrection. And fun fact, it's actually the actress that played Liz in that What is True Love movie, the JW romantic comedy that you can watch right here. It's it's super cringe. Mm, that sounds exciting. I don't know what it means either. <laughs> you? I'm on electrical. Ah. It's 
Some of these paradise scenes are grounded and emotional, but some of them are incredibly silly. Like this music video with Jade and Nita, who were kind of JW celebrities until they disappeared <laughs> for some reason. They are in paradise and then they go preach to this lady dressed in a Bo Peep costume. Remember, JWs believe that most of the people that have ever lived will be resurrected since they never had a chance to learn about Jesus. So JWs expect to teach Native Americans, pirates, and Victorian era ladies and convert them. <laughs> yes, I'm not kidding. And under JW beliefs, even horrific people like Genghis Khan or, you know, all those warmongers of history have a chance to be resurrected and convert to the religion. I'm not joking. And it's just around the corner. Then we get to the cooking scenes. And here's another fun fact. Uh, JWs never portray meat in paradise. We're all going to be vegetarian. We're only going to be eating bread and milk and fruits and veggies. Mm, that's it. I don't know, man. Is it really paradise without the smell of sizzling bacon? Uh, I'm not too sure. Bacon, bacon, bacon. Then we get the silly graphic of Jehovah looking down on the earth. Our joy eternally. Then there's this other video of a young girl imagining herself in paradise. Hope is an anchor that holds us firm. Hope is a light that shines like the sun as we see ourselves there in the new world to come. 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 Plot twist. She's also paralyzed. I told you it was gonna be a common trope. And there's not only music videos about paradise, there's also children's music videos about paradise, which are somehow worse. The fullness of our heart overflows in our song, a glory and honor and praise to you belong. I told you pandas were everywhere in this religion. <laughs> This girl meets her sister in paradise. Again, the resurrection is how JWs cope with death. We're almost done, don't worry. And there's another quirky piece of paradise lore we haven't talked about. There will be no deserts. Like, they won't exist. They're all gonna become like prairies and blooming fields. Even though deserts are an important part of the global ecosystem. Like, we wouldn't have the Amazon rainforest without the Sahara. You know that, right? But I digress. These things are not supposed to make sense. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. More watermelons and more pandas. Plot twist, the girl is paralyzed. How many times are they gonna use paralyzed girls to pull at her heartstrings? Now let's take a look at one final video because this one has a completely different animation style. Kind of like Cartoon Network, Steven Universe kind of feel. <laughs> and it features Caleb and Sophia's family teaching Chinese people about biblical prophecies and whatnot. Wow, I can talk to Chinese people.
this is all it is guys playing with animals and eating treats that's how you sell paradise to children And then we see more Bible characters coming back to life and we see the grown-up versions of Caleb and Sophia. And I'm glad to see that they didn't remain children for 8,000 years. So that's JW Paradise for you. Paradise is what keeps Jehovah's Witnesses in the religion. They want to see their dead loved ones be resurrected. They want to live free of disease. They want to be young again. You can imagine how attractive this idea becomes to someone who is going through a rough time. Most of the people that convert to this religion were converted because they were sold the idea of a paradise while they were going through a rough time. So if you've been watching my videos, you might be wondering, how are millions of Jehovah's Witnesses able to continue in this religion even though it's blatantly false? Are they stupid? And the answer is no. No, they're not stupid. They're just humans. And humans are emotional and we're willing to buy into a comforting lie as long as it gives us hope. This hope of paradise feels so real to them that they're willing to sacrifice their life now in order to make it into the new world. They're constantly told to imagine themselves in this new world and to reject anything that might discourage them from the hope. I remember in the Spanish congregation, we had this saying, and I don't know if you have it in English, but it described life in paradise as la vida que realmente es vida. The life that is truly life. Meaning that this current life that we live in, in this system, is nothing but a mirage. It's fake. It's garbage compared to what is to come. JWs are willing to waste this one real life that they have in exchange for a fantasy that will never arrive. And I think that's a tremendous tragedy. <laughs> I give these cartoons 9 out of 10 in the cult meter. It's propaganda through and through. And I hope you can enjoy this one precious life we have right now because it's all we have, guys. Even if you're a believer in an afterlife and you're convinced you're going to heaven or to Jannah or to some other version of paradise, the bottom line is, this life is still temporary, so live it as much as you can and don't waste it away for a pipe dream. And while you're at it, please let me know in the comments below the moment you lost the cringe challenge because I love reading your comments. If you would like to gain early access to all my videos, please join me on Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. It's super easy, all you have to do is hit the join button down below and for $1 a month, you get early access to all my work and you help me keep this channel going for years to come. Thank you so much to everyone who has supported this channel financially. Take it easy guys, have a wonderful day, and stay away from the tower. Oh, you close my <laughs>